Welcome back to another episode. In this one, we're going to be talking about the coat and trousers that I have for my Edwardian full dress. But before before I go into those, I'm going to pass on a few corrections from my very last video. First off, apparently pocket watches were not worn in the vest pocket of a peak vest or PK vest during the Edwardian period as it was and still is by most accounts considered pretty tacky to have a big gold chain. So in the future I will not be wearing my pocket watch on a chain on my vest. I have another accessory that I have ordered in the meantime which is more appropriate and we will go over that when I go through accessories and I'm excited to show you that. Second, I should not have been referring to this entire ensemble as a tuxedo. Uh, this is a term that here, especially in the United States, we would like to refer to any formal outfit, whether it's appropriate or not. So I've actually been corrected and it is considered, the, the proper term is considered full dress. So that's what I'm going to be referring to it as, or referring to this ensemble that I'm putting together as from now on, full dress. Lastly, I'd like to shout out to my mom, who is my very first subscriber. Hi, mom. And also to my dad, who watches these, but he doesn't have a YouTube account, so he can't really like or subscribe or do anything like that. So, hi to both of y'all. Love y'all. Thanks for watching. So now, on to the coat. Here is my tail coat that I will be using for full dress. This is an original coat. I managed to find it on eBay and it is in my size which is extraordinarily lucky on my part. Very pleased with it. Uh, this dates based on the tags probably from the late teens to 20s based on the tag and on the cut. So as you can see there's a bit of an angle here at the bottom of the waist which is indicative of a uh, late teens, early 20s tail coat. If we open it up, look on the inside. As you can see, the liner is pretty much gone. Uh, it's seen better days. There's a lot of these little spots where it's starting to fray, and uh, I will eventually go through that and I will trim them up and get rid of them. It's one of the things I'm going to be doing today. Uh, looking at the tags. First tag here is the Lewis Sachs Clothing Company. Uh, clothiers to the whole family out of Birmingham, Alabama here in the United States. The Lewis Sachs Clothing Company was uh, a company in Birmingham, Alabama that was in uh, business between the 1880s up until the latest I could find was uh, an ad in the Corolla, which is the student newspaper for the University of Alabama, uh, an advertisement in there from 1927. That's the latest date that I could find. Uh, sometime in the late 20s, not, probably not long after that, the uh, Lewis Sachs company folded and a different company uh, bought it out. But uh, that puts this coat at its latest at 1927 or thereabouts, and at its earliest based on the style about between 1916 and 1927, which is right smack dab in the time period that I'm looking for. The only other tag is this dry cleaning tag, which is a relatively modern dry cleaning tag from Millwood, Alberta. So at some point this got, probably within the last 20 years, it got dry cleaned some in Canada, which is a really weird life because I did not buy this uh, from an eBay seller in Canada. I bought it out of the United States. So interesting life that it's had, and now it's gonna be put back to its original purpose because uh, it's a tailcoat designed for evening wear. Now, the other thing that I'm going to be doing today, besides trimming up those little frayed edges on the inside of the liner, is I'm going to go through and here on the collar, 
there's these little nips in areas where probably moths have gotten to it or the wear and tear because this is right on the edge and I'm going to go through with a fabric uh, like a sharpie marker made for fabric and uh, touch up those areas so that they're not visible there's not much I can do correction wise but I can at least make them not stand out as much uh, ideally this whole thing would get relined. I do not have the skills to reline something like that, so I'm just going to trim up what I can, uh, put in the uh, uh, marker, and go from there. And we've touched up the worst parts of our collar here with a Sharpie to disguise it. We're not fixing damage. Oh, there's a little one that I missed. We're not fixing any damage, but we are disguising the damage. And then uh, also went through and got rid of all the really egregious spots where the uh, liner where it was fraying. And those are all gone now. So, I believe that the coat is just about ready to go. Then, uh, I'll, next I will show you the pair of trousers that I have that go along with these. So, when I was looking for trousers for my full dress, I had a certain number of very specific things I was looking for. Uh, I wanted the material to be wool, 100% wool preferably, because that's what my coat is made of. I also wanted there, I did not want them to be pleated. A lot of modern tuxedo pants are pleated here at the front, which I did not want. Uh, I would have preferred to have a non-adjust, uh, non-adjustable pair. A lot of modern tuxedo style pants are, uh, they have adjustments on the side where they can fit a multitude of sizes. And I really wanted, um, something that was button fly. I didn't want zipper fly because the zipper is far too modern for what I'm going for. I was able to get some, but not all of what I was looking for with this pair. I bought this. Uh, this is a modern pair of tuxedo trousers that I bought off of eBay. Uh, these came out of England. They are 100% wool. You look at the tag. These are made by Do Dobell, Doble, whatever. Uh, and you can see they're 100% wool. Um, and then I had to do a lot of adjustment to it to make it what I wanted. Thankfully, uh, they were not pleated in the front, which is a big deal. They have this uh, the satin lining of the pockets, got the satin stripe along the side. Uh, but two things that I did not like that it, these did have, these were adjusted originally. You can see here there's the little spot where the old adjustment went through. Uh, I removed the adjustment uh, belts on either side. You can actually see the ghosts of the buttons there. I've already done all the modification on this. I, I, I modified these trousers before I started even thinking about making a YouTube video or a series about it. So I made that modification on either side. I used those buttons to convert what was a zipper fly into a button fly. So you can see sort of the remnants of the old but, uh, old zipper here that I've removed. I added buttons. I added a separate fly piece here that I made out of a piece of, or out of some black cotton that I had. My sewing machine sewed it in place. Uh, four button closure uh, that replaced the old zipper. And then 
I went and I got some buttons here that are very similar out in town and I sewed them on the inside for uh, braces. And then these are a pair of white elastic braces. Historically they would have used something probably more like silk or something really fine. Uh, do not have access to anything like that so I have a, a more there are still a button pair of suspenders or braces but they are um, they're fine for what I need the braces were considered part of the underwear at the time they weren't seen so as long as they're white and don't print through my PK vest I uh, should be fine and there are my tail coat and trousers together uh, I believe that's going to do it for this episode thank you for watching See you next time, and next time or next video should be covering shirt, hat, and shoes to go along with this Edwardian full dress. Thanks for watching.